impact at the moment. One of the core areas we're working on is collaborative databases. So many different research groups and individual researchers put data in Excel sheets or access databases. They've got a lot of them and they're not necessarily talk, thought about research data management. What happens if my laptop breaks, if the hard disk that this um, uh, Excel spreadsheet is on, can multiple people work on the same spreadsheet at the same time or not? Um, so I think there's a lot of going, things going on, a lot of similar work being in do, done in different uh, uh, research groups across our faculty. So if we can help to try and um, help with good data management practices, think about sustainability of that research data. So there is a three-year, five-year funded project. Um, what happens with the data afterwards? Um, what can we do to sort of think about that from before the project starts? What IT support do they need? Can we involve people in that process to try and um, sustain that? Because it's often patchwork funding. So somebody's interested in a, like let's say, um, the Southern Dutch dialects. We're working with some dialectologists at the moment. So they've been going now 40, 50 years collecting questionnaires and uh, how all the different dialect words in, in Flanders uh, are, are used. And this is a huge resource. It's a huge longitudinal study. And how can we um, instill good data management practices in that so that the, this legacy um, stays on for, for many years? Um, I think that through the work of data research data management for example we've had training sessions we've had doctoral school students one doctoral school student recently said well I want to move from spreadsheet hell to database dreams and I thought we're going to be she's going to be publishing a blog post on that soon but it's really somebody fighting with an excel sheet uh, on their personal laptop to making that into a user-friendly space where multiple people can log in at the same time, they can share their research data, they can say, hey, uh, what do you think about this? And we can, you know, do all this work together. So I think that step-by-step -step process, we'll just gain a, 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 a database, database expert, an ICT specialist to help us out with this. Um, but I think that will be a huge impact for the different research groups within our faculty. Yes. Well, one of the things as a researcher that I hope to reach, I mean, um, as a researcher, I'm involved in speech recognition and the things around that um, going from human uh, speech to written text. Um, for that, we are collecting a lot of data to build the uh, speech recognition engine uh, to do all kind of context modeling for example if you talk about um, we, we do have a project now for the Dutch Parliament uh, where we want to, to, to recognize everything said in Parliament well the, the language used in Parliament is quite specific I mean it's normal Dutch but they use other words than someone telling about the party last night so that means to have an optimal result we need a parliamentary uh, language model that covers the way politicians speak in our national parliament. So we are making this model and we do it for our project. But I hope that the research infrastructure can help me to publish and to make this language model sustainable. I mean, there are 200 million words and we are building right now this language model. And once it is there and it works and it increases the performance of your recognition engine, I hope I mean, we are going to the next project, and that may be something completely different, but I hope that I can store the language model and the data the language model is based on in a repository, and it will be there for the coming five to ten years, that other, uh, other researchers can profit from the, 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 the stuff that we did. And that's basically what I what we needed as researchers.
Research infrastructures can play a major role when it comes to uh, software preservation and preservation of uh, method, uh, methodology, forensic methodology of, histori of historic uh, computing systems, which have very individual forensic uh, characteristics to be exploited by a researcher. This is not properly documented anywhere. Forensic experts have very have a very short time frame of attention of historical attention attention they are interested in how to get into a suspect's system that is three years old we have a totally different focus uh, and that has to be documented uh, research infrastructures could preserve uh, software, also historical forensic software, which, well, gets into and deals with historical platforms, for example. Or document procedures uh, that were successful in, uh, in analyzing a specific kind of system. Um, these, were, these are things where research infrastructures could play a role and I hope will play a role at some point. Actually, it is something that I would like to do at some point. Uh, if, I look on, uh, if I look at a broader spectrum of digital humanities research infrastructures, um, the, um, my personal understanding is that usually People look at research infrastructures as repositories, which can be served in a, in a, in a or which can be which can be used and served in a structured way, which are uh, which are being made more accessible by uh, by keywords, maybe data mining technologies, solar indexes, so on and so forth. That's all fine. I think that is still too limited. I think that research infrastructures should not be uh, should not, should not be just infrastructures that help us discovering material, but they have to play a role in the research process itself.